Good afternoon, folks. My name is Omer Ahern, Jr., and I am the Grafton County Commissioner from District 3, uh, which is the southeast corner of Grafton County. Uh, today is July 19th, 2017, and I am going to give you my uh, periodic County Commissioner report. It's been a couple of weeks since I have met with you. The County Commissioners did not meet the week of July 4th. Uh, a couple of things that I uh, want to just mention to you is the county budget has been approved by the county delegation. They approved the uh, uh, budget on July 3rd. The county delegation did add some additional uh, expenditures to the budget that the commissioners had proposed, and that final budget is online at the county commissioners or the Grafton County website, and that's available online. So today, I would like to report to you on the meetings of the county commissioners on June 27th, July 11th, because we did not meet the week of July 4th, that being Independence Day, and then today's meeting of July 19th. Again, just to give you a little background, Grafton County has three county commissioners. Linda Lauer uh, is the chairman of the Board of Commissioners. She comes from the town of Bath, and she's the District 1 commissioner. Uh, the District 2 commissioner, which encompasses the towns of Hanover, Lebanon, and Enfield, is Commissioner Wendy Piper, and she lives in Enfield, and then uh, myself, Omar Ahern Jr., uh, representing District 3, which kind of encompasses the towns uh, as far north as uh, Campton and over to Rumney and Dorchester and way over to Canaan, and then south Alexandria, uh, Ashland, Bristol, Bridgewater, uh, Hebron, and of course Plymouth and Holderness. So when we met on July, on June 27th, we met with the Department of Corrections Superintendent Tom Elliott, and he gave us his uh, report as the uh, Superintendent of Corrections. We have a relatively new correctional facility uh, built in uh, about six years ago, 2011 and 2010 was when it was built. It was built to house 150 inmates, at present, we're housing about 88 to 90 inmates. The correctional facility has its own kitchen, has its own laundry area, and it also has separate pods. It has a pod for female uh, inmates, juvenile inmates, high security inmates, medium security inmates, minimum in inmates. It also has a very um, uh, high quality uh, medical wing and actually has two um, uh, zero-gravity medical rooms. So Mr. Elliott um, basically talks about uh, any issues that he has at the uh, correctional facility. Mr. Elliott uh, provides inmates who are sentenced to the Department of Corrections to work in the farm uh, operations, in the dairy farm, uh, in the uh, vegetable field operations, we also have a community uh, corrections program where the inmates uh, that are available uh, will go out into the community and, uh, for example, they ha are now just finishing up painting the Grange Hall, the Baker River Grange in Rumney. They do cemetery cleanups. Uh, after the last few storms that we had, they did a cemetery cleanup up in Bath. The uh, Department of Corrections uh, corrections officers are now represented by a union and we just uh, entered into a union uh, contract um, with the folks there. One of the questions that I had of, uh, commission, of uh, Superintendent Elliott uh, was uh, what, what the C Department of Corrections does to address the uh, uh, issue of Muslim inmates. And he, correct, he provided to us uh, a week later a uh, packet of information from the Council on American Islamic Relations entitled The Correctional Institution's Guide to Islamic 
religious practices. So uh, Mr. Elliott presented that to us on actually on June 27th, so I must have given him a heads up on that. That's kind of an interesting report. I will re be reporting more about that uh, in the future. One of the questions that was asked of uh, Superintendent Elliott was what we charge inmates from other counties. Uh, as I've said in the past, we have uh, female, count, uh, female inmates from Coas County, and we receive $55 per day uh, for each of those female uh, inmates from Coas County, plus their medical. If they have any medical issues, uh, Coas County pays for those uh, medical issues. The, uh, basically, the cost to house an inmate at Grafton County, even though we only charge $55 a day for those coming from the outside, basically in 2016, the cost was $135 per day was the cost to uh, incarcerate an inmate in Grafton County. The next uh, item on the June 27th uh, agenda was Bill Gilding, the Alternative Sentencing Director. And in the Alternative Sentencing Program, we have Drug Court, we have Mental Health Court, and we also have Adult Diversion and Juvenile Restorative Justice. Uh, our Juvenile Restorative Justice Program is in conjunction with the uh, Katy program that we also have here in Plymouth. There are some issues uh, with the alternative sense sentencing program and the drug court program specifically uh, that we are addressing at, at this time. The next uh, report that we had was from Karen Clough, who is the Human Resource Director, and her report pertains uh, normally to um, uh, the number of openings we have in the nursing home, in the Department of Corrections, and how we're filling those positions. So she gives us a monthly report there. Again, that report uh, would be included in the June 27 minutes that are now uh, on the uh, County Commissioner website if you're interested in finding out more specifics there. As usual, we are always looking for more RNs and more LNAs to work at our county nursing home. The last report on June 27th was from Brent Ruggles, the information technology uh, manager, and Brent does a tremendous job in giving us a report on what's going on in the various departments at Grafton County. He does a lot of work uh, and uh, maintenance, maintenance of computers at the, at the county attorney's office, the uh, alternative sentencing office, the uh, U UNH Cooperative Extension. He was in updating some computers there, does work in the commissioner's office. As I said, community corrections, he does work with their computers. Uh, he actually does uh, the computer there at the farm and of course information technology, maintenance and registry of deeds. The uh, information technology folks are the ones that are the glue that hold the, the all of the county uh, operations together up there in up in North Haverhill. So that's pretty much our report quickly for June 27th. If you're interested in, in seeing the minutes from that meeting you can go online as I said to the Grafton County website and get that information. Our next meeting was on July 11th, and we started out uh, at 9 o'clock after doing the Pledge of Allegiance. And again, our meetings are every Tuesday with, uh, with a few exceptions like this week when we met today, Wednesday. But we uh, meet on Tuesday mornings at 9 o'clock at the administrative uh, building up, on North, uh, up in North Haverhill on the Daniel Webster Highway. So on, on Tuesday, July 11th, after doing the Pledge of Allegiance at 9 o'clock, the first item on the agenda was to recognize one of the maintenance uh, department crew, Dennis McLam. And Dennis was uh, presented with a, uh, a certificate of appreciation for coming up and developing a little uh, rig for moving uh, uh, part of the, one of the washing machines that we had to replace. So in recognition of this labor-saving device that can be used many, many times at the county in the future, the commissioners uh, recognized Dennis, gave him a certificate, and he was also given 
a check for $200 in recognition of his uh, very uh, good, good suggestion for making things easier for our, our uh, maintenance folks at the county. We also had a, re a full report from Jim Oakes, the uh, maintenance supervisor, and he came in uh, and asked for a bid waiver to purchase some replacement windows in the nursing home and the administration building. He, we had to waive the bid because the total cost of all those windows was going to be more than $5,000. And based upon the presentation by Mr. Oakes as to the problems that he's had over the years in trying to find good replacement windows for our facilities, uh, the company that he asked us to waive the bidding process on, Mayo's Glass, uh, he said they were very reliable, they stood behind their product, and they didn't... Um, make it very difficult for the county to deal with him. So uh, we waived the bidding process and awarded the bid of about uh, $6,200 to Mayo's Glass. The next report we had was from the farm manager, Donnie Kimball, and at that time on July 11th, we we're milking 70 cows, shipping 5000 400 pounds of milk a day, averaging 77 pounds per cow, which is a very good average for uh, a dairy cow, especially the Holsteins that we milk. The price of milk is up a little bit. We're now getting $17.79 per hundredweight for our milk. Uh, they are working to try to get the first cut, cutting of hay done at that time. As any farmer knows in the area, weather has not given uh, much opportunity to get our, to get our hay cut. The farm stand opened on July 6, selling zucchini and summer squash, and at this point I'm sure they're selling beet greens, radishes, and some other vegetables. The, the farm stand up there on Daniel Webster, on the, no, Dartmouth College Highway is now open. The, uh, we, as I said a couple of weeks ago, we, one of our farm, uh, farm employees is out on family medical leave because of a uh, physical issue that he has. We're trying to fill that position now. They had four people apply for the farm job, basically to do milking. Um, uh, and he, the farm manager said he was going to interview those folks this week. It is my understanding in talking with the head herdsman this afternoon before I came over here that we have not yet filled that position on the farm. Um, we are going to have pigs at the North Haverhill Fair. The North Haverhill Fair starts next Wednesday. Um, we did have a litter of pigs, 13 to 14 pigs were born on the morning of uh, July uh, 11th, and some of those pigs will be shown uh, at the North Haverhill Fair. We're expecting another three litters of pigs to come this fall, and those pigs are going to, uh, of course, be offered to the public for sale. One of the issues that the farm manager report is he does not have enough inmate labor available. Uh, we need two for the farm, we need three to four people for the vegetable field, and Sergeant Griffin in the community corrections needs three uh, inmates. So because of the number of inmates that are sentenced to the House of Correction, uh, there aren't very many. We can't really use pre-sentenced uh, or pre-trial inmates because uh, that's what the rules and regulations say. So. Uh, that's the farm report. We also then had a report from Kelly Monahan, uh, the Register of Deeds, and she always gives us a very positive report as to uh, how much money the county is making off of its share of the transfer stamps that go to the state of New Hampshire. And there have been some uh, major sales over in the Hanover, Lebanon area, and a couple of big sales uh, on, the big, on the lake in, in Holderness this year. Again, Karen Clough came uh, to discuss uh, the final uh, changes to the employee handbook and based upon uh, her earlier report to us, the commissioners approved a new revised employee handbook, uh, which will also then be on the uh, internet uh, or the website for you to take a look at that. We then had uh, Laura Saffel, the county attorney, come in and talk with us, uh, give us a report on the uh, uh, Northern Pass uh, proceedings down in front of the uh, uh, site evaluation committee down in Concord because Grafton County has uh, filed its appearance as an intervener and we're very concerned about what the uh, 
Northern Pass is going to do to our beautiful central here in New Hampshire, central New Hampshire. So those are the things that Lara Saffo was talking about. She also is very much, her office is very much involved with the alternative sentencing program, and we discussed some of those uh, issues. Also, I'm getting ready to make a, a suggestion as to who um, I would like to re uh, nominate to be recognized in the uh, annual report for the 2016-2017 uh, fiscal year, and I have someone in mind that I would like to nominate uh, to be recognized in that report. The, actually the uh, corrections officers in the correctional facility on July 11th uh, presented us with a petition to decertify the union. And as I said in my report for uh, J June uh, 27th, we had uh, uh, a report that the uh, union contract with the uh, Department of Corrections had been uh, negotiated and we just needed to sign it. And now uh, on July 11th, we receive a report that some of the corrections officers want to uh, have that union decertified. Always things going on at Grafton County. The last report I'd like to share is today's meeting, July 19th, and started out with the Human uh, Services Administrator, Nancy Bishop, uh, coming in and making her uh, periodic report. And she always has good news for us. And uh, we ended up with a little bit more money coming from the state for pro share money and cap money. And so we're always glad to hear from Nancy Bishop. She does a very good job as the human service administrator. She basically deals with the Medicaid, Medicare uh, financial figures. Uh, some of our residents who may be on Medicaid are being taken care of in their home. So there's some money going there through the HICBIC program. And we get reimbursements from the state. Then the county also has to reimburse the state on other aspects. So it's, it's just an awful lot of numbers. The uh, assistant maintenance superintendent, uh, Richard Thompson, was in today because our superintendent of maintenance uh, has had some medical issues over the last couple of weeks. So Richard Thompson came in and talked about uh, the uh, work that the maintenance department does on a regular basis, a lot of preventive maintenance in each of the uh, buildings, the farm, the biomass plant, the alternative sentencing building, also known as the old commissioner building, and what he does at the nursing home, the courthouse, and the administrative building and Department of Corrections. There's a lot of work that they do to keep our buildings up in, in good condition, and we appreciate all the hard work that uh, the maintenance department does. The treasurer, county treasurer was in, Karen Liot Hill from Lebanon, and she came in uh, to talk about tax anticipation notes, and she had a recommendation uh, as to which bank she would like the county to go to, but because there weren't, there wasn't more than one bank that she had solicited, uh, we had to ask the county treasurer to go out and solicit two or three more bids so that we could have a, a choice uh, on what the terms of it would be. We um, also received the final uh, figures from the 2017 fiscal year and have some good news in that regard. These are unaudited totals and we had revenue of $40,855,170. We had expenses of $40,156,000, excuse me, $40,156,357. And we had expended encumbered funds of $195,232, therefore leaving us revenue in excess of expenses of $503,580. Where we were very much overexpended is in the uh, contract nursing part of the nursing home. We were uh, overexpended in that particular part of the budget by $423,336. Uh, 
that is kind of distressing. Uh, and as I keep saying every week when I make my report, we're always looking for registered nurses and LNAs to uh, make application to come and work for our elderly folks there at the nursing home in Grafton County. So these figures will all be on online as well. And just a lot of things going on uh, up there at the uh, county complex in North Haverhill. As always, if you have any questions of me, please do not hesitate to call me at 536-2224, 536-2224. That's a landline. I'm not always there, but I have voicemail. And please leave a message with your name, your phone number, and a good time for me to return your call. The other thing I'd like to let you know is I do have an email address. Uh, my personal email is omer dot a-h-e-r-n dot j-r at gmail dot com. Again, omer dot ahern dot j-r at gmail dot com. I'm always interested in hearing from uh, my constituents, hearing about any concerns they may have from residents that have uh, been living at the nursing home or employees' concerns. The other thing that I would just want to do is I want to thank the Pemi Baker TV folks for giving me this opportunity to let you know what's going on from the county uh, on using their facilities here in Plymouth. And I have nothing else to say at this point. It's been a long day. Uh, the, it's very hot out there, very cool here in the basement of the Pease Library here in Plymouth. And again, I'm Omer Ahern, Jr., I am the District 3 Grafton County Commissioner, and I appreciate this opportunity to be of service to the folks here in Grafton County. Thank you, and take care. God bless America, and God bless the great state of New Hampshire.